Utilities hate solar. Utilities don't hate solar, but it doesn't always benefit them. In fact, solar alone or grid set, grid tied production doesn't match the utility's needs. And when solar produces the most in the early afternoon, say noon or one o'clock, utilities may not need it at all. They don't hate it, but they can't control it. They don't really want to pay retail rates for power they can't use. Batteries, on the other hand, are loved by almost all utilities because it can be dispatched or used when needed. Find out how your utility wants you to dispatch power and save even more with batteries. Generators could never do that. I'm Joel Robinson. I'm founder, pilot, builder, and entrepreneur, and I help people and businesses take control of their power, money, and future using renewable energy. You can save a bunch of money or just do something really cool, like live off grid or power your entire home with solar. Let's dig into a specific utility charge called demand charge, which is a fee or penalty for using too much power at one point in time. In the case of flat electric, the demand charge is for the highest 15 minute continuous usage during their demand windows. The two demand windows are in the morning from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. and again in the evening from 5 to 8 p.m. On your bill, you'll see a demand charge for the highest 15 minute usage times a demand rate. That's because they pay a fee for the similar type of usage to their supplier. And they're just passing on those fees because of congestion or limitation in the grid during those times. The demand charge represents uh, a penalty or you could see it as an incentive to not use the grid during those times. I like to use the road system or the highway possibly and congestions at certain time of the day to help explain this rush hour fee that the that the utility calls a demand fee there's typically a morning rush when people are going to work and then a morning rush at night when people are going home from work those two rush hours per day are really similar to the grid the grid will see a high usage in the morning when we get up brew coffee, cook breakfast, take a shower, maybe run the dryer for a little while. And then at, it's at its highest again at the end of the day when we come home, cook dinner, turn on the TV, use the internet, maybe take another shower and a lot of electrical usage inside the house. So that double hump, maybe like a camel or diurnal pattern is pretty typical for utilities, uh, especially ours in the Pacific Northwest. So this is similar to traffic jam or road congestion, that the road just gets full of vehicles and traffic and activity and it slows everything down. That high usage makes it more likely to have issues such as an overload or potentially even an outage. So the utility is charging a demand charge to discourage use during those times. Maybe if you could leave earlier for work, you wouldn't be in the rush hour traffic, or maybe leave later in the day and have uh, clear roads. Because there's plenty of availability at other times during the day. And the idea that we're gonna build extra lanes or a new highway just for the peaks is similar to what the utilities are saying. Do they need to add extra lines just to manage the peak demand? So these two peaks during the day are really important because the utility has to plan around these peaks, has to be able to service those peak capacities. So instead of upgrading infrastructure, charging more and increasing our bills, they're trying to send signals to the users, homes and businesses to use the grid more or less during certain times of the day. Our utility, Flathead Electric, charges a demand charge from in the morning and at night to discourage you from uh, using those times. And now that I've explained it, it kind of makes sense. But how would you ever do this? How do we know what our peak usage is? Now, I had an experience where I lived in a home with a 100 amp main panel. So if we use more than 100 amps, we would trip the main breaker. This was the only feedback 
this was the only way I knew that we were using more than that amount. There's no dial or readout or any kind of information that tells me that we're over 100 amp. So how would I know? What's the best way to know this for sure? Well, it it actually is hard to do unless you install some type of device that tracks usage and reports it to you. And one of those ways is a smart electrical panel. Smart electrical panels are connected to the internet and report on the usage on a per circuit or breaker level. This would be the only way, this is one of way that you would know what your peak electrical usage is during those demand windows. And the, one of the only ways we would know how to address it. And we can reduce our demand charges with a smart electrical panel like SPAN or EcoFlow's smart home panel by identifying high loads that can be shifted or moved to a different time. So what loads are those? Well, I don't know that we want to change when we eat dinner. Maybe you could a little bit, but using the oven at a different time, take quite a bit of planning. We could probably run the clothes dryer at a different time to avoid that peak usage. But I don't know when the hot water heater turns on. I'm not in control of it. There's no switch for it. The the dryer or the dishwasher, when it goes into drying mode, can use a lot of electricity to run that electrical resistance. So I understand the utilities giving us the signal to use less electricity to try and save everybody money, but I don't know how. How would we control it? The solar doesn't necessarily help either. Solar production doesn't match. Product, solar panels just produce when the sun comes out. We don't have control over it. So this can cause a mismatch between solar production and the energy demand by the utility. And this mismatch is what creates the conflict. So this mismatch between the utilities demands, which is us as users, ovens, dryers, electric cars, this mismatch between the two creates the conflict. Utilities don't necessarily want to pay for this power. Homeowners or businesses don't necessarily have control over it. And this creates a mismatch. And no, utilities companies don't hate solar, but the daily pattern and the generation of solar, which starts at sun up real small, goes stronger and stronger until the early afternoon at its peak, and then slowly winds down, really doesn't match that pattern from the utility. And California has a famous duck curve, which shows or looks like a duck in a pattern. But what it's really showing is that <clears throat> when solar is producing its peak in the afternoon, it drops the net demand down real low. And then in the evening when people get home, get this big ramp up and our demand can see why utilities uh, don't necessarily like grid tied solar, but they do love batteries because batteries can shift this load and manage this peak usage. So it's like adding an extra lane on the highway just during rush hour traffic, only when you need it. That'd be slick, wouldn't it? But instead, the utilities are giving you a signal. And the only way to manage this fee, demand charge, would be to reduce your electrical usage to a minimum during morning and evening demand windows. Well, how do we do that? How can we possibly manage our electrical load twice a day when... I might not even be there. And that's that's a good point. So a smart electrical panel can help you identify which loads need to be managed. Those loads can be scheduled or pushed into non-demand windows. And then during those demand windows for critical loads that need to be run, we can offset them with battery usage. Reducing this demand fee will save you money. It will increase the return on your solar system. And... It will make your utility happy. They'll love you for it because you're contributing to the grid now, grid stability, and offsetting those potentially huge costs to build out new transformers or upgrade lines. This can be the partnership that's really important. 
where solar and battery users contribute to the grid to help solve congestion in supply power when it's needed the most. So utilities don't hate solar, but they don't necessarily like it when they have extra power and they can't use it. So instead, so installing a battery and programming it to discharge during the demand windows creates the most value. Please subscribe. Tell me more. Watch my other videos.